I'm presenting here on a project where we look at caused accompanied motion events in a direction in Austronesian languages, so bringing and taking events. And I'm presenting this on behalf of several co-authors. The one in blue are the ones who are actually here at the conference. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Um, essentially, you know, in, in layman's terms, you would say we're talking about bringing and taking events. It's not a good label for several <laughs> reasons, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but essentially, um, if we start looking at bringing and taking, or bring and take as verbs in English as a starting point, there's a semantic description of bring and take verbs in the literature, for example, by Gropen et al. And um, English bring and take express caused motion. So there's an agent who is causing a theme to move, as in this little animation. So there is a person carrying plastic bottles to the recycling bin, as we all should. <laughs> it's also accompanied motion. That means the agent and the theme actually share the same trajectory, and that's important to distinguish them from other events. So the agent is not throwing the bag or sending the bag, but agent and theme move together. And it's also directed motion. Um, so that's also called path in Talmi's topology. We have motion towards a goal or in a direction. And in the case of English bring and take, this direction is didactically specific. So it's anchored at the didactic center, typically the speaker. Then in Beth Levine's work, we also find that bring and take um, have to be described as manner neutral. And Levine uses that to separate them as their own little verb class in English, separate from verbs like carry, for example. So they do not tell us anything about how the theme is caused to move, so whether it's shoved or dragged or carried. And bring and take also do not tell us anything about the manner of motion of the agent, whether the agent is running or swimming or something like that. So these are semantic features of the English verbs bring and take. We can assume that every language um, can express events of that type, but what we should, should not assume is that uh, the expressions of these events in other languages would share the same semantic features that I just went through. So we wouldn't assume that they're uh, lexicalized same features, and by lexicalized we mean there is a verb root, verb root that entails certain semantic components. So for that reason, the use of the, the labels bring and take, so the English verbs bring and take as labels for this semantic domain is very problematic because these labels evoke exactly the semantic features that I just went through. Um, so therefore, uh, the English labels bring and take, and I use caps here uh, to refer to them, uh, we're trying to use only for the type of verbs that actually share all these semantic features. And that means we actually need another label for the domain we're looking at, and we're calling it caused accompanied motion in a direction, or CAM in a direction. And so the, the semantic domain we're interested in, uh, in can be defined, or we choose to define it, as events that involve causation of motion, accompanied motion, and directedness of motion. So there's some kind of directionality involved. So these are our core features. And we're interested in how are these expressed in languages. And here I present on the Austronesian languages of our sample. It's actually part of a larger project where we look, look at some other types of languages as well. And then there are additional features. And we've seen English has didactic specific semantics in the verbs. We consider that an additional feature is not defining the domain we're interested in, but it is inherent in the English lexeme, so we can't get away from them in the English expression. So they are expressed lexically in English. English happens to be manner um, neutral, or the expressions are manner neutral, and that may be not the case in other languages. So for these additional features, and I'm so far listing dikes and uh, manner of caused motion because they have popped up in the literature so far. Uh, we're interested in those features primarily if they are lexicalized in the, in the main verbs in these expressions, but we're less interested in them if they're expressed, you know, um, optionally, you can presumably express that kind of information in any language. We're less interested in optional expression. We're interested if that comes up in the lexicalization of caused accompanied motion. So this gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Now, briefly, an idea of what kind of methodology this is based on. I'm presenting here data from 
five Austronesian languages. One is uh, Austronesian, uh, but not Oceanic from Indonesia, and the other four are Oceanic. And the research I'm presenting is based on the annotation of events in text data. So the researchers that are listed here, and uh, which are the co uh, who are the co-authors, uh, all have uh, been involved in establishing language corpora, compiling language corpora as part of documentation projects, and they are archived with Dobis and Old Paradisek. And um, on the basis of this text data, which we suggest is shares many similarities across these languages, we have looked for events of the type we're interested in. So the researchers have annotated these in Toolbox or Elan to create a searchable database to then see what kind of verbs do we find, what kind of morphology plays a role, to then look at the data across the languages. Okay, so now I can actually talk about directed cause accompanied motion events in Austronesian languages having given you this background. We're interested in what type of expressions there are. So how are these expressed? What kind of verbs, what kind of concepts are used to talk about this domain? To, to put in other terms, what are the closest translation equivalents to English bring and take? Whether that's helpful or not, I don't know, but it's problematic, but it helps you keep track of what we're talking about. And we're interested in, are there some expressions that are more common than others within a language and across these languages? We also came with a question of uh, what is the role of lexicalization versus morphosyntax, because this project is in fact a spin-off of uh, an earlier project where we looked at a whole range of three participant events and caused accompanied motion in a direction is one of them. And we already noticed in the course of that project that a lot of expressions are morphosyntactically complex. So for certain concepts where we have a lexical item in one language, we have morphosyntactically compositional expressions. So we knew we had to look at lexicalization and morphosyntax. What we weren't aware and which came out in the course of this project is that in some languages regularly we need to, or speakers draw on pragmatics or hearers draw on pragmatics to actually interpret certain expressions as caused accompanied motion in the direction because it's not all expressed by lexicalization and morphosyntax. So one question is, do we have bring and take type verbs in Austronesian, uh, having all the semantic features we, we discussed for English? And the answer is no, none of the five we looked at have bring and take verbs. If any of you have Austronesian languages that have bring and take verbs, that would be interesting. So we mean verbs that have these semantic features. What we find across all five languages is that the component of directedness, so it's going in a direction or towards a goal, is regularly encoded by a separate morpheme. That can be a directional affix, that can be a compound verb stem, or that can be verb sterilization. But uh, consistently, we have caused accompanied motion expressed by a verb stem and directedness of motion somehow separately. And it's probably totally, ah, oh yeah, I'm sure, exactly, I've seen that uh, in going on in your heads right now because that seemed to be a very common pattern in Austronesian. So morphosyntactic complexity, just a couple of examples. We have one here uh, where uh, from Sudest, which is from Harriet Shepard's work. Uh, we have a directional suffix. So we have a verb meaning something like get with a suffix hither, and that's actually the expression bring me, bring it to me, bring me your brother, or get your brother hither, something like that. In Saliba, here an example with a compositional verb stem, as a compound verb stem, we have a verb to carry, compounded with the verb to go up. Um, he took them up. Um, so again, directedness is uh, expressed by a separate lexeme here. And there are other types of constructions. I'll just show you these two. So what we find in terms of what components are lexicalized or how are things expressed, we find the separation in our three defining components of, this of what we're looking at caused accompanied motion is expressed in some way and directedness is expressed separately by separate uh, morphemes. So now we have an idea of how directedness is expressed. I said there's a range of constructions and I'm only showing you some of them. Uh, let's have a look how caused motion and accompanied motion is encoded in the verbs we found. 
Um, so here you see little graphs, one per language in this sample. At the bottom, you see three languages that all have a verb like fetch or get as the most common expression. So it's Nafsan, Totoli, and Sudest. And then we have Saliba Logea and Vera A that have other verbs as the most common one. In Saliba, it's carry. In Vera, it's something like to, to move, transitive move something. Um, so you see some patterns. We have fetch also popping up in Saliba. It doesn't occur in the list of Vera A. Um, there are a few things to note. First of all, the counts here, let's say for Nafsan, this is not the count of fetch tokens or get tokens in the corpus. It's the total of 105 are all events that Nick Tieberger and I looked at and identified as caused accompanied motion in a direction. That's the 100 tokens. Of these 150 something are covered by fetch. There are many, many instances, many more tokens of fetch where they do not express this type of event, okay? So the token types are only describing the number of cases where this particular verb expresses this particular semantic domain, and often they can also involve, be involved in other type of events. For example, carrying something but not in a direction or not towards a goal, okay? Um, so one thing we can clearly observe here, whatever the differences may be, that each language has one verb that covers between 50 to 60 percent of this semantic domain. So one one verb that seems to be doing the major job of describing this or to be the default, most common translation equivalent uh, of the English spring and tech verbs. If you now look at the types of verbs we find, first of all, it's interesting, we have quite a long list. Um, and we can look at the lexical semantics of these verbs in different ways. We can say that some of them express cause motion, so fetch and get and transitive move, express caused motion, but they do not actually specify whether this caused motion is accompanied or not. So whether the agent moves along the same path. So if I have my bottle here, um, so I can move this around without actually sharing the same trajectory. So this would be non, there would be caused motion, but not accompanied. But if I'm taking this bottle and putting it over here, agent body moves along the same way. So we have what we would describe as two different types of events that can be covered by the same lexeme depending on stuff, and stuff I'll get into in the next few slides. Then we have accompany verbs. They do the opposite thing. You say uh, something's being accompanied, but there's actually nothing in the verb that specifies whether this is caused motion or not. And then we have some types of verbs that uh, in their lexical semantics entail caused accompanied motion, such as carry, lead, and transport. Another way of looking at these is that we have some that are uh, manner neutral. So the first three verbs here are manner neutral, no information about manner of motion or manner of caused motion. And then we have some that are man um, manner specific, such as carry, lead, and transport. So in terms of the additional features that we were interested in, in terms of is something in addition to caused accompanied motion lexicalized in the verbs that play a role here, uh, we find manner of caused motion does play a role in several languages and the directive specificness we've seen in English but not in the Aus Austronesian data we looked at. And then an interesting finding is we have another type of additional feature which is theme specific caused motion. Um, and we find that in Sudest, which is the work of Harriet Shepard, you'll hear more about that on Thursday, uh, in Sudest, we actually don't have one fetch or get verb, but a whole bunch of them, and they differ on the basis of what is being fetched or got. Uh, this is a pattern that's actually well known for uh, uh, Athabascan languages, but to our knowledge, unknown in Austronesian languages. I'll show you this one slide, but Harriet Shepard will give a talk about exactly this on Thursday. Okay, so we... We'll uh, briefly want to look at move and accompany verbs, so the ones that entail either caused motion or accompaniment, but not both. Um, the examples here come from Vera A, so a, a verb that we label move. Again, the capital verb labels are English labels, which are our closest, uh, closest approximation to the semantics of the verb we're dealing with. They're not necessarily 100% match with the semantics of, 
of the Austronesian data, but close. So there, a, a move verb expresses caused motion, and depending on the scale of the motion, the verb can describe non-accompanied or accompanied motion, which I just showed you with this bottle. And this is typically dependent on the scale of space. So if it's tabletop space, as in chess or putting teacups on the table, there is caused motion. Tabletop space tend to be non-accompanied, uh, while if it's geographic space, the, the agent actually moves along with the theme. So we have an implicature of accompanied motion in certain contexts, but it's not the lexical semantics of the verb that provides this, or morphosyntax. Then in accompany verbs, we have that, for example, in Vera A and also in Totoli, we have a verb that expresses accompanied motion. And depending on the situation, this may be caused accompanied motion or non-caused. Um, if I'm accompanying the bottle to the table, it's very likely to be caused motion because the bottle doesn't have little legs and kind of goes to the table along with me. So there's nothing in the verb that tells us we're dealing with caused motion, but the situation may bring that up as an applicator again. So this is what I mean by the role of pragmatics in expressing these events on a regular basis in some contexts. Um, in Vera A, we actually find, oops, uh, what have I done here? Sorry. Um, we find that the, the two verbs that you know, entail one or the other actually work together quite, quite closely, if you want, to cover this semantic space. So the two of them together cover 78% of all the instances we identified in the corpus of these type of events. If we then look at carry and lead as another example, lead or guide, um, we find carry verbs express caused accompanied motion, so both uh, components are entailed. They are manner specific. Uh, in the case of carry, this manner specificity can actually have an effect on the choice of the theme objects. So we find that handled objects are okay with these verbs, but self-moving objects are not. So in Saliba, we have uh, this strategy, Kebolo Kubaheyama, bring me the spear. It's carry it hither. Um, yes, it's a great translation equivalent of English, bring and take, bring in this case, uh, but I cannot use this to take my auntie to the railway station unless I'm carrying my auntie to the railway station. So it's not specifying the object, but the manner has a flow and effect on what types of objects work well here. And then the counterpart of that are verbs like lead or guide. Again, they're express course accompanied motion, they're manner specific, but they, they work with uh, self-moving, self-propelling objects, um, and they do not work with objects which are carried, typically. Again, in Saliba, we find that the carry verb, the, or the one of the carry verbs, and the verbs guide and lead together cover a lot of this semantic space, so close to 80%, somewhat similar to the Vera A slide I showed you, just very different verbs. So, some findings and conclusions of um, what I presented here. We have no lexemes like bring and take in the Austronesian languages, and in fact, there are many languages uh, in the rest of our sample languages, which are non-Austronesian, that share that. It doesn't seem to be very common in the languages we looked at. We do find a coherent pattern in the treatment of directionality as expressed by a separate morpheme, and then there's a whole variety of how that can happen, but it's not expressed in the same lexeme as caused and or accompanied motion. We find a high de uh, uh, degree of diversity in the expression of these caused accompanied motion events, both in the inventory of verbs uh, in individual languages and also what the preferred choice of verb is in different languages. And not all expressions entail both caused motion and accompanied motion. Then one point that I haven't actually addressed but that I think is interesting and relevant, the availability and the existence of a certain lexeme or construction in a language doesn't predict it being used to express this semantic domain. So carry verbs occur in all the languages. They happen to be the preferred strategy in Saliba Logea, but totally minor in all the other languages. And also um, constructions like come and go verbs which are transitivized either by a causative or by an applicative transitivizer 
exist in several of these languages, so they're available, but they play a very minor role in the languages we looked at. Um, and that's interesting because in the literature, bring and take have been described as the transitivized or causativized equivalent of come and go. And semantically, that's not a bad description, but we do not find that as the morphological expression of these events, even though these expressions do exist. And then we found that pairs or sets of verbs kind of together work to complement each other to cover the semantic space that we termed directed caused accompanied motion events. So we found, for example, in Vera A, move and accompany go hand in hand to, to cover the space, while in Sali Balogeo we find carry and lead type verbs carry the space, uh, cover the space. So we have a kind of a job share between more than one lexeme to try to, to cover this domain but they're very different types of verbs that work together. And in fact, that's reminiscent to what we find in English. So in English, we have two verbs covering a lot of this space, and they happen to be dialectically different, while in Sali Balogea, their manner are different, and in Vera A, they're different in terms of what's entailed and what's implied. So that's an interesting pattern. It would be interesting to see whether this holds in different languages. Then finally, to summarize, um, role of morphosyntax, lexicalization, and pragmatics. Uh, we find directionality expressed consistently separately. Lexicalization, we find verbs may or uh, entail caused motion or accompanied motion or both. And then in the role of uh, pragmatics, we can see that even a verb only entails one, certain contexts or situations will trigger an applicature um, of the missing component so that we can say that the, the, the constructions uh, in a particular context are expressions of caused accompanied motion in a direction. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, there is any question? Yes, Alex, please. Um, maybe someone who knows uh, Indonesian semantics better than me can comment on this, but it seems like bawa, membawa in Indonesian seems to be a good translation of bring and take. It's not dialectically specific, um, but would that count as a... I don't speak count? Indonesian. We have lots of people in the project who do. Yeah. Um, do you not find bawa combining with directionals like ma, mai or something like that? Not really. It okay. Um, well, you can say bawa to there or bawa to here, but yep. that's like kind of like English, I guess. Uh, well, no, not, exactly. No. Well, English would not. be bring plus take, so it well, would cover both. Well, that's the whole point, that it's you don't find to here or to there lexicalized in the bawa. So you would have bawa as the closest equivalent to both bring and take, that's depending right. on what bawa combines with or the context. So in that sense, it's not mirroring English at okay. all, it's actually mirroring exactly what I'm talking about. Gotcha. But the here or there, you need to somehow provide by different means. While in English, bring has a dialectic semantic component. Right, right, yeah. Yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. Interesting to hear whether bawa is manner specific, is it carry, or is it get? It seems to me identical except the dialectic uh, part to the English bring and okay. take. But uh, my, my hunch would be that it's possibly more like a get verb, and there's uh -huh. certain certain diagnostics we developed of what, what do we call a get verb and what do we call a carry verb and what do we call a bring verb. Yeah. And they're, they are language specific, but there are actually parallels in different languages. Yeah. So my hunch would be it's more likely to be a get verb or possibly something like the vera le, uh, uh, which is cause to move, uh, but to be discussed yeah. would be interesting. It, the normalization bawa an means an offering for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, Manfred, thank you. About um, um, the role of the object, uh, but I'm aware of uh, in in Dark here one verb uh, specific for children uh, carried on the back, but I think it's only for children. And another interesting distinction between a regular verb for carrying uh, carrying one object or carrying a lot of objects, yep. three or more. Yeah, we actually find. In all of the Austronesian languages, they have a rich inventory of carry verbs, and there's some literature that, that seems to be quite uh, common and typical. And we thought, oh, wow, great, we have all these carry verbs, let's see what role they play. And we found that it tends to be 
either none of them or maximally one or maybe two that are used in this domain and that all the others carry a baby, carry a bilum, carry something on a pole. They all describe different carry events but are not used in context where people took it to the village or people carried it to the garden uh, where the goal plays a role. So the directionality or the goal tends to be not combined with these less common specific carry verbs. You get them and then they carried him on the shoulder, on their shoulder or but not they took him on their shoulder to the village. Um, so we actually expected to find more the, of the different carry verbs to, to pop up, but in terms of looking at the domain of carrying or transporting something in a direction, they do not play a role and tends to be, if at all, like in Saliba, it's the carry in hand verbs that does that. So it's interesting that they do not play more of a role, even though they all have interesting <coughs> paradigms of, of carry. Uh, Alex. Um, so thanks for your talk. Um, I uh, I noticed in the the Vera'a data something which you didn't comment on, I think, but which is interesting also is that uh, the order between main verb or, or in a zero pattern, whether the path is in V1 or V2, and, uh, can be even in one lang in the same language, like in this case Vera'a, you would have. So you had some examples like uh, I take go down the bottle. Uh, and, or I take go down the bottle hither, okay? Uh, and another sentence, the same language, was I descend holding the water, right? I and, think the difference was one is the, uh, I think it's not a free order. I think the difference is that the caused motion verb has the directionality serialization in one order, but the accompanied motion verb has the direction serialization in the other order. Is that correct, Stefan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not free. Um, but we find the directionality component of the in, in Vera and serialization uh, with one verb proceeds, with one other verb follows. In most of the other languages, Did we find that directionality that follows, ah. but one of the Papuan languages in our sample, Sabo Sabo, Claudia Wigner's work, has the other way around that it's uh, come, anyway, so, yeah. uh, actually, no, it's, no, it's not, me. Not, no, no, I'm thinking of the wrong thing, I think Claudia has the same order. So it's verb specific. Yes. I uh, just wanted to briefly comment on the Indonesian data. Um, so the Bawa, I think, mostly corresponds to transport and also carry. Um, it doesn't include any direction. You can say Bawa Kasini, Bawa Kasana in any direction. But the other one is Ambil, which is probably more like fetch. So that really includes something. Mm. Um, however, what I wanted to say is um, that uh, I find it a bit dangerous to make claims about all Austronesian languages. Oh, I'm, when I'm not. I'm always saying the you five like that we looked at, although with the directionality, I th my hypothesis is that yeah. that's very common. Because but yes, I want to hear... Because you, ha you had like four Oceanic languages, like one from Indonesia mm. and like nothing from Taiwan and nothing oh, from... Oh, no, absolutely. Other. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm not actually okay, making good. claims of all Austronesian languages. Maybe right. if we have a bigger sample. But let me put this out as, here we have a very clear pattern in five languages. Tell us if that's the pattern that you find in the languages you're familiar with or whether it works really differently. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't make broad claims. No. Right. Um, and also about the, so the English examples, like bring and take, they're pretty clearly, they, ch they show a direction. But when you look at German, for example, you actually have the, like, at least the cognate of bring, um, which you can modify, like herbringen, hinbringen, and then it changes the direction. Yep. Um, which you actually also find, like in all, like in Vera, with some or like in verse, where you actually can modify these verbs again, like with the second verb or whatever you call it. So, have you looked at these patterns too? Well, first of all, um, I think to clarify, because l lots of people are aware of this, and lots of people are not aware of this, English bring and German bringen are so clearly cognate that it's easy to think they've worked the same way. Any second language learners of English like me with the first language of German, it's not correct to say, I'm bringing these books back to the library if neither you or the addressee is there. I was told by Matthew Dreyer when I was a research assistant, <laughs> you cannot say that. In German, you can do that. So German bring is very different dialectically, and that's why it works with hin and her, so come hither and, and not 
either. Uh, but English is kind of much more rigid directional than that. Malcolm. Very brief comment on what was said a moment ago. I'm as confident as I think you are that if you were to extend your corpus right across much of Oceania, you would find exactly the same patterns because I, I did quite a you lot You mean of with directionality? Presumably. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I did quite a lot of reconstructive work oh, about 15 years ago um, on these structures and I found the same things, the things that you're reporting everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, what's different here is that you're doing it on the basis of a corpus whereas I was using dictionaries and grammars. Yeah. Um, and the corpus is far more reliable, but I, I, it seems to me it's, it's picking up what is really almost pan-oceanic, and that's, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think it's a good hypothesis that we just have to say, you know, remains to be proven, but I think we can use lexical databases and dictionaries also a lot to, to inform this question. The problem is we find an awful lot of really bad glossing of these events. So we find in our own corpora, which sometimes we had English as the meta language used by German speakers to translate something that is, uh, you know, Indonesian equivalent of Baba transport somebody to hospital, they brought him to the hospital, which is the, the English bring with the German, you can bring something to where you are not, uh, and the verb just means get. And in the lexicon, you might find all kinds of things. So that's part of what we try to do, to have criteria. For example, a get verb is normally used as, I got the bottle. So lots of the fetch and get verbs in the corpora are, I got the bottle and I have it now. In order to make that a bring-take kind of thing, so a cause accompanied motion and direction, I got the bottle to you, or I got the bottle there. So often the lexical semantics entails something and we need criteria to call something a get verb or a carry verb or a bring verb and yet not use them randomly with English and German uh, interaction as meta language is actually very fun. You can make a lot of interesting mistakes. 